Hello and welcome to this video on Microsoft Excel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new Microsoft Excel function that Microsoft has just released just the other day called the let function. Now open in front of you I've got an example file I'll provide a link to this down inside the description where you can download it you can read up on it here and you can even use it to follow along with me as I go through and demonstrate this brand new function. Now, first thing I do want to point out is that the let function, it's a new feature inside of Microsoft Excel, but it is available to Office 365 subscribers in the Office Insider program. So it's not available to everybody just yet, um, but Microsoft has announced that they will be rolling this out uh, throughout the year to other subscribers and other levels within the Office uh, 365 subscription. So with that said, um, let's take a look at what the let function is all about. So on the first worksheet within this example file, I've got just a quick introduction into the function to kind of breaking it down and what it can be used for. So first off, it is let, it's L-E-T, let, the let function. Uh, and it takes a number of parameters and we're gonna talk about these parameters or arguments as we continue through and learn more about this let function. But as you can see, it takes a name, it takes a value, and then optionally, you can set up multiple names that are associated with multiple values. And then the last argument is a calculation. So, so the let function allows you to associate a value. Okay, so this value could be a numeric value, it could be a text value, it could be a range of cells, it could be a, an expression, a formula. It could be pretty complex or pretty simple, but then you take that value and then you associate it to a name. So for example, I may have a range of cells, A1 A to A2000, that I then need to reference within an, a calculation, within a formula. Well, normally I would have to reference A1 to A2000. Well, utilizing the let function, I could take that range of cells and then I can just give it a name. And then that way, within the let function, I can reference that range of cells through the name. We're calling it a name here, but for those programmers out there, it's essentially a variable. You've created a variable, and now you're putting something inside of it that you can then reference within, in this case, within the let function. So it's a value name pairing that you then use within a calculation. Okay? That's the let function. Now the name variable, it's available within the let function. It is scoped to the function. Meaning if I create a let function, I create the name and the value, put those two together. I can then use that name as long as I'm within the that let function. As soon as I move into another function or I do something outside of the initial let, it's no longer available to me. The scope has gone away. That, that name value pairing is no longer available. So what are some of the benefits of this let function? Well, that's something that's gonna be seen as we take a look at how we work inside of Excel, what our formulas currently look like, and how we can potentially bring that let function in to streamline our functions. And that's really one of the big benefits of the let function. You might find that you create redundancy within some of your calculations. Well, utilizing the let function, where you create that name and give it a value, you can then use that name multiple times within that function. You don't have to retype the range again, remember A1 to A2000. If that's something that you do multiple times within a function, create it once, give it a name, and then repeat that name each time you wanna use it. Okay? So more efficiency and more readability. The other thing is, if you put a, an expression within the let function, so you got the name and then you put a formula an expression inside that name. Well, that's something you can cut down on redundancy as well. In the past, if you created a, a formula that repeated the same expression multiple times inside of it, well, each time Excel sees that expression, it has to recalculate that, okay? which takes up a performance hit. Well, with the let function, you create the name, you put the expression in that name, it calculates it once, and then you just reference it by the name. That's it, you're done. It doesn't have to keep recalculating that every time it sees it. 
So there's some pretty big performance benefits out of utilizing the let function as well. Now down below, I've got a really simple example and we're gonna put this into practice on the next tab. But you can see here with the let that I'm saying, okay, we're gonna use the let function. I'm gonna create a name called X. I'm gonna give it a value of two and then I'm gonna say X plus 10, all right? So if we step into this formula, we can see X is equal to two then we're, then we're gonna take two plus 10, which then gives us x comma two comma 12 from doing that expression there, which ultimately gives us the result of 12. Now let's see this in practice. I'm gonna move over to the worksheet called simple let function. All right, like I said, simple. So I'm gonna hop up here into C3 and I'm just gonna bang out a let function right here. So I'm gonna say equals let, I'm gonna open up a parentheses. Now it gives me the arguments right there. And just to make it a little bit clearer, I'm gonna go click on the FX button here, just to open up the function arguments window and we can kind of really spell it out here. So the first thing the let function wants to know is well, hey, you're gonna create a name or a variable and then you're gonna put something inside of that name. Well, first thing it wants to know is well, what's the name? I'm just gonna call it X, just simple. We'll call it X. I'm gonna drop down to name value one. So what's the value that's gonna be associated with name one? And I'm gonna put a two in there. So X is gonna become equal to two. So now what's our calculation gonna be? Well, I'm just gonna say X plus 10. So we're gonna take the name X, which is equal to two, and we're gonna take X or two plus 10. And that's it. I'm gonna stop right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we've got our 12. So we're taking 10, we're adding X to it, or X is really equal to two, so we're getting 12. And I can step through this. If you're on a Windows system, unfortunately this won't work on a Mac, uh, this next feature I'm about to show here. If I go to, excuse me, if I go to the formulas tab, I can then go into evaluate formula, making sure that I have my formula cell selected. And let's just watch this. So I got let X is the name, two is the value. It's going to uh, evaluate X plus 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and say evaluate. So we got two plus 10. I'm gonna evaluate again. We now got 12. I'm gonna evaluate again. And we're left off with just 12. Final result of that let function. All right, that's simple. Just taking a name giving it a value, and then using that name within a calculation, within an expression somehow. Now, we can also do multiple names or multiple variables within a let. Take a look. So next worksheet, let two variables. I'm gonna hop into C3 again, and this time I'm gonna create a name called X, assign it a value of two. I'm gonna create another name called Y, and I'll assign that to three. So inside of C3, once again, I'll say equals let, open parentheses. I'm gonna hit the FX button once again. All right, first step is I'm gonna set up the two names. So I'm gonna come in here and say, first one is X, we'll give that a value of two. Now the next option here says calculation or name, name two. So I'm gonna do another name. I'm not gonna do a calculation yet. I'm gonna say Y, and I'm gonna give that a value of three. And then my next one, we could continue going. You can do additional names here, it says or name three, right? Well, you know what? I'm gonna stop there and I'm just gonna do a calculation. So I'm gonna say X plus Y. All right, let's, let's just do, leave it at that right there. Remember, X is equal to two, Y is equal to three, so now I'll do X plus Y. And I've got my results of five. All right, so still utilizing the let function, creating names, giving them values, and then using that name within a calculation. So let's get a little bit more complex, a little bit more kind of real world scenarios here. These were just simple ones to get an idea of what the let function is all about and how we can potentially use it. Let's go to the next tab, let range zero one. All right, so here I've got a nice little table, sales individuals and some weekly sales amounts. Now, this is actually a question I get asked quite a bit of, and I've sent this out through emails and I've created videos about it uh, and sent it out to people. The question is, well, hey, I wanna get the minimum. I wanna get the minimum value, let's say. I wanna I want find out for week one, right? What was the minimum value? 
But then I get people coming to me and say, hey, that's great, right? We use the min function, you find the minimum value. So I can say something like equals min and go grab this range of cells. There we go. And now I found the minimum value. But then I get people come back to me and say, that's great. But what if I wanna find not just the minimum value, but I wanna know who, who that minimum value came from, right? Which salesperson got that minimum value? Well, we create a formula to do that utilizing the index and match functions. So if I click into cell B11, where I got K done, because K done did receive the minimum value, right? I could look up here at my formula bar, and here I used an index function, and then nested within there I used a match function, and then nested within there I used the min function. Now, how is let gonna help us out here, right? You can take a look at that formula, you can pause the video, you can dissect that. If you haven't done this before, this is a great technique to use, right? Find a value based on something else. And that's really what the index and match is gonna do for us. Well, here's where the let function comes into play. Within this formula, and it's a little more complex, a little bit more involved, not just a simple min, I have referenced the same range of cells twice. Here's B4 through B8, and then here it is again, B4 through B8. I've used it twice in there, meaning I had to type that in twice, or I had to go out and select it twice. Well, the let function, remember, you give something a name, and then you put something in there, and you can reuse it, right? So take a look. I'm gonna modify this function and introduce the let. So I'm gonna hop right, at, right before index and after the equal sign, and I'm gonna bring in let. All right, so remember the let function, the first thing it wants to know is create the name. So I'm gonna call this, mm, let's call this uh, weak range. Weak range. Now, I'm not putting a space in there, I'm just cramming it all together. I do the capitalized W and R to make it easier to read, but that's the name I'm gonna use, weak range. Then I'm gonna do comma. The second thing the let function wants to know is, well, what do you wanna put in there? What are you gonna associate with that name? What's your expression gonna be here? So in this case, I'm gonna reference the range of cells. So I'm gonna come over here and grab B4 through B8. And I'm gonna do comma again. Now the third thing that the let function wants to know is, okay, great, you got the name, you've got what's associated with that name, and now it wants to know the calculation. How are you gonna use that name? Well, remember, we're using this B4 through B8 twice within the index match functions. Well, instead of using the range, I'm gonna use the name that I just created. So I'll select weak range. I'm just gonna copy that. Come over here, replace B4 through B8, paste. Grab this B4 through B8, paste. So I create it once, and then I just use it. Put a value in there, and I can use it. This is huge. Okay, it's another simple example, but what if your range changes? In the prior calculation, I'd have to update the range twice. Here, I update it once. I've given it a name, and then I just use it. All right, I need to close another parentheses here. Whoop, there we go. I'll hit my enter key, and K done is still there. Now, watch this, watch this. So this is done, K done, he grabbed it, right? 5,975 is the minimum value and it's associated with K done. If I grab that and drag it over, I've now got it for each week. If I go look at the formulas, still using let, still using the name there, week range, but the cell range, which was a relative reference, did update, did update. K done, got the minimum again, oh, K done. H. James got it here. Let's see, H. James, 8,500. Oop, okay, oh, Dunn actually got that as well. Okay, Dunn, not hitting it too good. But it found the first one in there. We could modify this to pick up multiple, but for now. And then L. Carey got the minimum here, 7,512, right there. Updates, relative reference. Huge, 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 huge. All right. I got, I got another example here. I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Make sure you download the file. You can find it in the description, a link to the file. But here, inside of cell F2, I've got a calculation that does something very similar to what we just looked at. 
um, but it's a bit more involved. I want you to determine where you can use the let function here. Okay, modify this formula to include the let and use a name and then use that name within this expression right here. Okay, I'm gonna leave it up to you. You figure that one out. Okay, and then you could post your results, go to the comments, post in your results, your, your uh, solution right there. Let us see what you did it. I'm interested to see what people come up with. And even if you think of other ways that you can use the let function, right, post that inside the comment section as well. Let us know, it's brand new for Microsoft, right? And we're gonna figure out where we can use this at within our own working scenarios. Now I do have another one here. This is the let repeating function. Uh, here I've got a list of names and bonus points, bonus points. Go to the comments section again. You can tell me, these, these are real names. I pulled these off the internet. These are names of actors and actresses. Right, these are their born names, right? Their given names. Some some actors, actresses change their names, and they got screen names, right? If you can tell me whose names each of these belong to, bonus points for you. But back to Excel and the let function, I've got three formulas here, and it's really the middle one that can probably benefit the most from the let function, right? If we take a look, this one is extracting the middle name from these three names. Bradley, William Bradley Pitt. Did you get that one? Did you get it? So at this one, look at the formula. It's pretty involved. There's a lot going on up there. But there's a couple of repeated expressions. Search. It's searching for an empty space. Two quotes with the space. Where's it going to search? Inside of cell A4. What characters are going to start with? Number one. That right there, that expression right there is repeated a couple of times inside of this formula. We can use a let to free that up, have it evaluate it once, be that much faster, and hit get a nice performance hit back from Excel by utilizing the let function. And just really quickly, I'll modify this formula, bring in the let. I'm gonna open up my FX just to make it a little bit easier to read here. So let's see, my name, is going to be not that right there. That's going to be the calculation. Let's just cut that out. So my name is going to be, hmm, what should we find? We call this find space. Because that's really what we're looking for is the space. And then the value is going to be that search. It's going to be this guy right here. And I'm just modifying the formula. You can take a look at the end result here in just a moment. But we created a name, called it find space. This is what it's gonna do, okay? Search for the space inside of cell A4, start with the first character. And then within the calculation, I'm just gonna replace, I'm gonna copy find space, and I'm gonna replace the functions, search, search for that space, start inside of cell A4, and start with the first character. So all I'm doing here is just replacing it where it finds it inside of that calculation. There's another one right there. Editing this might have been easier to edit up here. Let's just take a look. Find space, that's the name. That's where we're gonna put into that name. And then within the calculation, we're gonna say find space plus one, find space plus one, find space. We're just replacing where we find that uh, search, search for the empty cell, search for it in A4 and start with the first character. That's it right there. So I'll hit okay. Yep. And there's still Bradley. Let's drag that down. Get all those middle names from each of those individuals. You can probably tell where some of these are coming from. But huge, you create it once, it, it, it runs that expression once, it's got it in the name, and then just reuses it. Huge. Again, take a moment, Download the file, you can follow along with it, you can practice on your own, and think think about where you can use this. And I'm really interested. Go to the comments section of this video and let me know where you can think, where could you use this within your own working scenarios within Microsoft Excel? So I appreciate you watching this video. Take a moment, if you enjoyed it, you learned something new, hit the like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and get updates when new videos come out about Microsoft Excel and other Office products. Thanks a lot.